So hi guys, uh, my name is Michael Lynn. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're doing a different video. It's a, my first collaboration with these guys. Uh, so how about you guys explain your YouTube channel, what you guys do? Yep, so I'll go. So hi guys, I'm Tejas and uh, we started this channel called Breaking Code and basically we do the same thing what Michael does. So the entire point of this channel is to be explain people how to go about competitive coding problems. Uh, so basically direct you in how to think about these problems and how to start solving them easily. So just to give my ba uh, background introduction, I'm Tejas, I'm working with Amazon currently. Uh, that's it. And we need, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, so uh, hi, I'm Vineet and uh, yeah, I work, uh, I don't know if you know, it's a retail, for, it's a retail store, it's called Tesco, it's a UK based retail store and yeah, that's it, I had my uh, like bachelor's and master's from computer science and now I just work. Perfect. And, yeah. Cool, cool. <laughs> uh, Michael, we don't know you, so can you introduce yourself? Oh yeah, so... Basically, um, my name is Michael Lin, and uh, I, I'm still in an undergrad studying computer science at uh, University of Maryland. And I started this YouTube channel just to, you know, to st because uh, I, f I did pretty poorly on my first uh, interview session with Google. So I started this YouTube channel just to help, help people going through their interview process and also doing competitive programming. So yeah, that's, that's the reason why I started this YouTube channel. But yeah, it's cool. Like, uh, like uh, from my experience, everyone does poor in the first interview with Google. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to worry about. Yeah. yeah so, so yeah, like, uh, uh, like I'll just, uh, from what I've seen from Michael's videos, uh, the content delivery of Michael is like really great. So like I personally find his videos more informative. Uh, so I think like kudos to you, Michael. Yeah, but uh, I'm still a very new, new, new person. I'm not a good at algorithms and data structures at all by any means. But, but yeah. I, I think this is a great thing because this channel itself will motivate you to make more videos and learn about them. So uh, like the same yeah. thing happened with us. Even we started this channel when we were in college, third year, I guess. And uh, yeah, basically the same thing happened. So the comments keep on coming and... Uh, basically, we were forced into doing more, and this is how we started learning more and more. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. It's 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 great. Video content is pretty good. I feel like when you teach people, it's uh, you the algorithms get ingrained in your brain more. But yeah, uh, so I I wanted to just start off on uh, for like just a few questions that I wrote down about how how beginners should approach competitive programming problems or how they should improve so uh, most of my content is mostly for like beginners who just just started competitive programming so from you guys uh what do you think is the best way for beginners who just started yeah perfect so the most important thing as per me is uh getting the basics right so it's not about just solving a dynamic programming problem in your first week itself the most important thing is you need to understand why we are using things like dynamic programming or even the data structure for the matter of fact, like why do we need to use stacks instead of arrays? So the basic understanding of why we are doing this problem is more important than how we are doing this problem that way. So yeah, that's like the intro of how you should approach a problem from my side. Cool, cool. Well, what about the Vinit? Uh, what, what do you uh, think? Uh, so that is basically, but then, okay, so as a beginner, you're obviously going to fail and you're going to get those runtime errors and those uh, time exceeded, like, oh, what's it? I forgot what it was called, like time exceeded, yeah. You're going to exceed the limits. But then, uh, so uh, for me, like as, as a beginner, you can, so competitions, uh, like uh, the ones that, uh, you ho, you ho. So you take part in, uh, I guess it's from code poses, uh, like, um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, one, one, yeah, you should definitely take part in, uh, start, uh, competitions because they, uh, Im imbibe the time factor in it, which is mostly how like coding interviews are like, so you're supposed to do it on the spot within a, like it's, it's a very flexible timing, but then you're still supposed to do it in that time so you should definitely take part in competitions more but then uh i would say don't get disheartened if you don't do good because as a beginner like uh getting uh, getting the first like getting one 
out of let's say a uh, five problems that would be uh, would also be a good thing uh, if you get it in that uh, like one one and a half hour of time that you have uh, but uh, the important aspect is you grow so uh, let's say you get uh, you you approach a problem and then you get a time exceeded issue so uh, what would be important is uh, you take that back and then you try to do it a better way and that is how you learn you learn things and then you build up your knowledge and then you use them uh, in the future so yeah uh, as a beginner yeah solve as many problems as you can take part in competitions and and have that growth mindset if you yes uh, i i agree a lot about definitely about getting into the growth mindset but uh, do, you, do you think beginners should care about like rankings and stuff like that and comparing themselves to other people? Because I feel like that demotivates people, you know? What do you think? Um, yeah, absolutely. Like uh, even the same thing happened with us. Like uh, we used to get like one or two problems out of five in competitions. And which is not good because uh, usually when we see rankings, we see top 10 people who did like five problems in maybe just an hour. So, but what we miss is that these guys have been practicing since way longer than what we are. So the important thing is not get discouraged by how much you solve, but you should compare your performance with your last contest. And which is also fine, like few contests are difficult. So you'll uh, just solve one out of five. Few are easy, you might get three out of five. So that is the most important thing, not get disheartened by what's going on. But the important thing is to learn. So that's like the major mindset you need to have in the uh, beginner phases. After that, if you think you're doing good, like few people catch on really quickly. I have this friend who started uh, getting his rankings really well in just first three months of his programming thing. So like, yeah, if you're uh, doing good, then it's well and good, but it's absolutely very fine that you don't get those ranks and you'll still be a really good programmer in real life. I, I agree also, yeah, yeah. Uh, what what yeah. about you, Vineet? Um, yeah, I feel the same way though. As in, uh, so rankings are a good way to keep like a healthy competition, but uh, that's what they generally are. So if you like, so uh, a good thing about Code Forces and these websites is, is they have like two divisions, which so uh, uh, like, so uh, you know that you're not competing. Like uh, if you are in Dev2, then you know that you're not competing with like the best of the range, but then in dev two, so it's like what you should target on having is like the learning curve which you have. So uh, that should always grow. So uh, apart from that, yeah, rankings are just like so. Uh, I don't see them as a measure of your success because uh, you may have a, like a bad tournament or so one or two. So uh, it doesn't. As it, I wouldn't say it doesn't matter because uh, they would obviously show like some amount of growth, but then uh, uh, they're not they're not the uh, ultimate metric. Is what I would say. Cool, cool, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, so, do you what do you guys think about um, the certain topics that people should start out with? If they're just getting into it. Should they focus on math first? Should they or they should they focus on like greedy algorithms or or data structures? What, what do you think the beginner should focus on? Yep. So as for me, like, uh, it depends upon why you are doing this competitive coding. So most of the people, like I would say 80% of them do it for the interviews. So that's the main thing. Like if you're doing it for interviews, I think you should uh, focus more on the data structure problems. Uh, but if you're doing it for the longer term, uh, data structures, as in, I would say that, uh, binary trees is the most important one, uh, link list, array, array manipulation. But uh, if you're doing it for the longer run and you want to be really good at it, then basically you need to understand why we use those data structures. So you should uh, do your fair sh a share of trial and error from greedy algorithms as well. So that's the thing, like it depends upon why you're doing this. And uh, if it's just for the interview, you just want to do it for two or three months to just crack uh, Amazon or something like that, then I think you can just uh, skip to the data structures part. But uh, uh, doing it right from the basics, uh, knowing uh, the greedy approaches as well, will actually help you understand why you're doing this and it will help you in longer run. Cool, yeah, yeah. Thanks, that's uh, actually actually a good thing. I, I actually haven't been, haven't been understanding 
so much about the algorithms themselves and i've just been doing problems but yeah i, I agree uh, but yeah. but this is this is the most important part because i mentioned like people do it for interviews right so again like i i would say that i, I cannot speak for everybody but uh, i have few of my friends who are like really really good developers but they suck at competitive coding and uh, these algorithms uh, but like from what my experience is like this is not for everybody you need to put your efforts in this like learning these algorithms and all those things so but that's the thing like it doesn't measure act perfectly how good of a developer you are so just to add to the last question you don't get disheartened by uh, if you're not good at it i have few of my friends who are like one of the, few of the best programmers out there in the industries and who really suck at this yeah that, that's yeah. true also like so uh, like given uh, uh, if you see a competitive program uh, like a competitive programming question at its face value you so it's it's never as easy as like uh, use use like this array and do like this manipulate uh, like this uh, make these changes in an array and uh, so basically it's uh, Uh, at its very base, it's it's a problem that you need to solve. Like it's a it's a very uh, I w- I would want to say a real world problem, but you, we definitely don't know they are not. But yeah, uh, so uh, what also helps is uh, so let's say uh, you choose like an algorithm or like say a data structure that you would want to learn. So let's say you choose something. Uh, uh, let's say simple. Let, let's say you choose a tree, uh, like a tree algorithm, like a binary tree or any. tree uh, any tree data structure so what would help is uh, first uh, trying to know like uh, how like how it works and why certain operations are faster when you use a tree and uh, why they're not faster in like uh, an array for example so uh, trying to like learning that would be the first step i would say and then solve problems related to trees so that the next time uh, when you're in a competition or if you're solving a problem which you don't know what uh, like what you would want so if you solve like enough problems in trees you know that this particular problem will be solved by like using some tree or the other so that was just an example but that basically applies to like uh, any algorithm or data structure which you have like let's say you have a dynamic programming a dynamic programming problem and uh, at its face value you would never know that uh, you're supposed like uh, you get some hints but then uh, if you if you haven't solved enough dynamic programming problems you uh, like solving them enough would uh, give you that intuition and that uh, tell that these problems could be solved this way Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah I, I agree a lot. I agree a lot with that. Um, so yeah, uh, I think this is gonna be my last question for this uh, video. I think uh, I'm not sure if, how much time do you guys have left. Like, uh, w- w- what time do you is, do you guys have like specific deadline you have to leave? By the way, not for me. No, no, I don't. I'm free. Okay, well, uh, I I have to leave soon in like uh, about ten more minutes, but yeah. Uh, so here's the last question: Is um, uh, I didn't know you uh, you guys are already graduated and worked in the industry, right? So uh, yeah. how how often are you? Do you actually use these algorithms inside the industry? Like I know in the interview process, these uh, like they always ask about data structures and algorithms. How how often do you guys actually use these in the industry? By the way, this is uh, really. interesting question and uh, so the thing is that about how much we use it uh, so as per my experience i have never i used to work for jp morgan and that i never used it and uh, for amazon i guess i've used it a couple of times uh, a graph graph related problems but uh, again that's the thing we don't use it that often because most of the problems are solved and uh, that's the thing uh, like We use libraries for these uh, kind of things, but again, that's not the point because uh, solving competitive coding problems, algorithms, DAs, it actually uh, makes you think in a direction which is of a debugging approach. So that's the most important thing because uh, in the industry level, the most important thing that you're going to do is uh, fix and uh, write code upon someone else's code. You're not. Uh, very few scenarios you'll start coding from scratch so that is what these problems teach you how to debug code and how to understand code basically so i think that it, we don't use it that often but again i 
myself i have been like uh, like these problems have helped me a lot to uh, understand and debug code in industry level Cool. Um, yeah, that that is true. Yeah, that that's that's obviously true to uh, like a large extent. But uh, yeah, uh, that being said, we do have libraries which help. Uh, like uh, so, most of the code that you write uh, in, uh, like uh, what do you call it, a low level language like C or C plus plus would uh, eventually have like a library being made in a high level language like uh, Java or Python. But then. Uh, if if you know your basics and if you know that uh, this is why you're doing something this is why you're using like a tree or a hash map so uh, that helps uh, in your uh, choice over that uh, let's say what would you call it uh, that data structure so uh, let's say uh, you wouldn't necessarily need to implement like a map or a tree but then knowing that uh, some library internally uses map Uh, would tell you in which cases it works better and in which cases it would not. Cool, yeah, that's that's cool. I didn't. Uh, that that's what I thought. Uh, yeah, I think understanding uh, algorithms and data structures help you approach problem solving in a different way. But uh, I didn't expect that. Like I thought most people would actually use them because of the interview process. But yeah, that's 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 pretty interesting. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all I have to say for this video. So uh, yeah, guys, uh, check out your channel. These guys, it's uh, breaking code, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So check these guys out. I think they they do pretty good explanations of algorithm tutorials as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Very comfortable. And definitely, about, uh, like I'll upload this video on my channel as well. So I have uh, like I would definitely recommend code that Mike. because i i i personally comment on his videos and he is really good at it like uh, i think for any online tutor you how you deliver content is the most important thing it's not how much you know and i think like you have the talent mike all right yeah. thanks all right yeah so uh rate comes subscribe check these guys at channel out and i'll see you guys later bye yeah definitely bye